Hi, boys and girls. Okay, so we've been reading some nonfiction books, and this book is by Seaman or Seymour Simon. Oh, put the two words together, didn't I? Seymour Simon. And we've read about seahorses. We're going to read about other animals. But today, we are going to read about dogs. And do you have a dog or do you know someone who does? What are a few things you already know about dogs? Okay. All right. And then even though you know a lot about dogs and many of you have them as pets or know someone who has them as pets, there is always something new to learn. As we read today, keep noticing the special ways or notice the special ways that Seymour Simon writes and makes his books. Dogs. Mm, cool. Do you know what kind of dog that might be? You know, you might notice it from the Dalmatians. Okay. I'm going to try and show you the pictures and I'll just read the words here. Okay. The domestic dog is the most popular pet in the world. Tens of millions of dogs live with people as pets, working dogs or guard dogs. People and dogs have been together for thousands of years. We have shared shelter and food. We have hunted together, played together, and worked together. Scientists believe that dogs developed from wolves that had learned to live close to people. Eventually, five breeds of dogs emerged. Huge guard mastiffs, wolf-like dogs, shepherding dogs, greyhounds, and pointer dogs used for hunting. Today, there are more than four hundred breeds. Despite their differences, all dogs from the tiny Chihuahua to the Great Dane belong to the subspecies Canis lupus familiarius. Oh, look at these guys. Many dogs are fast and can run long distances. Some racing dogs, such as the Greyhound, can run more than 40 miles per hour. That's faster than you would drive in a neighborhood. The fastest human distance runner can run only 15 miles per hour. Okay, so a groundhog can run up, or a groundhog, ground, greyhound, my goodness, can run more than 40 miles per hour, but the fastest human can only run 15. That just tells you how fast dogs can run. Large domestic dogs have powerful, graceful bodies. Using their strong hind legs or back legs, some dogs can jump over a fence several times their own height. Dogs have strong teeth and jaws that are good for tearing meat. A big dog can bite 10 times harder than a person can. Dogs are able to swallow much larger hunks of food than humans are able to swallow. Dogs eat almost anything. A pet dog will eat meat or table scraps or dog chow made partly from grains. Now, Notice these pictures. Are these drawings or are these photographs? Yeah, these are photographs. And look at these dogs. You can really see from these photographs the details of these animals. Dogs have five senses, just as we do. But dogs are much more sensitive than we are. A dog can identify a friend from a stranger just by sniffing them. You have five million smell cells in your nose. A German Shepherd or a Bloodhound has more than 200 million smell cells in its nose. A Bloodhound can follow an animal's or a person's odor trail hours after it has been made. A dog can hear noises that are four times further away than the noises you can hear. That's why a watchdog barks before you hear any noise. A dog can hear a dog whistle easily where you can barely hear it. Dog's eyes are very sensitive to movement. If you stand still, a dog may not notice you, but an insect that moves in the grass will attract its attention. Dogs see mostly gray tones, but they can see some colors. 
such as the color red. So I want to show you this dog too. Oh, look at that little one. Look at those ears. <laughs> Dogs are very intelligent and they learn quickly. A dog instinctively knows how to get along with other dogs. In a pack, dogs, dogs have ranks. The leader is the dominant dog, or the boss. The others are submissive dogs, or followers. Pet dogs usually behave toward their human owner the same way they would behave toward the boss dog. When dogs meet, they sniff each other. Sniffing lets a dog know all about another dog, its age, gender, male or female, and rank. When a boss dog meets a follower dog, it shows dominance by raising its head, ears, and tail. A follower dog shows submission by crouching down or rolling over on its back. Dogs don't use words the way people do. Dogs use different sounds, from angry growling to happy barking to upset whimpering, to express their feelings. Learning dog talk will help you understand whether your pet dog is hungry or wants to go out for a walk. Just like other animals we have read about and will be reading about, dogs can communicate. How does that remind you of other animals you have heard about? All right. No. Oh. Female dogs usually can have babies by the time they are one year old. After mating with a male dog, a female dog gives birth to a litter of puppies about nine weeks later. Small dogs have litters of about, oh, four puppies. Large dogs can have eight or more puppies in their litters. A mother dog seems to know exactly what to do when her puppies are born. She bites through the umbilical cord that attaches each puppy to her. Then she licks the puppy. Now it can breathe and start suckling. It takes less than two hours for each puppy to be born. And here's one that's just a brand new baby. Look at that. Let me see if I can. So that's a brand new baby. See how it looks all wet? Yeah, it's just, it just brand new born. Here's another one that's not very old. Puppies are born both blind and deaf. For its first week, the puppy just suckles and sleeps. And for those who don't know, suckling means to drink their mama's milk. At two weeks, its eyes open. At three weeks, it can move around, focus its eyes, and hear sounds. At four weeks, the puppy starts playing with its litter mates. When you pick up a puppy, it wiggles. It may squeak. The puppy is tiny, but you can feel its muscles moving. Its skin feels warm and dry. At five to six weeks, the puppy has all of its first teeth, called milk teeth. It is ready to eat puppy meal or cereal with milk. Between six and ten weeks, the puppy begins exploring its surroundings. It should stay with its mother until it's at least eight to ten weeks old. By then, the puppy has stopped nursing. These last few pages about female dogs and their puppies, how does that remind you of other animals you know that have babies? Okay. We learned something about seahorses earlier this week. Of all the dogs, hounds may have the longest ties with people. Hounds were the earliest hunting dogs, which are these kinds right here. People bred them to hunt by sight or smell. Sight and gaze hounds, such as the greyhound and saluki, can use their keen eyesight to spot game from a long distance. Long-legged hounds are also great runners and can run down swift animals. Scent hounds like the Dachshund and Bloodhound track prey by smelling the ground for odors. Scent hounds usually have short, strong legs, long heads with big floppy ear flaps, and big noses. Their sense of smell is much as one million times better than your sense of smell. Many modern breeds of hounds are no longer used as hunters. They are kept as pets. 
Some hounds, such as beagles and bassets, tend to roam. To keep them at home, you need a lot of space and really good fences. So here's another type of hound here. I don't know if this maybe is the Saluki. I'm not exactly sure what type of breed this is, but I know those are hound dogs. Those are basset hounds here on this page. Oh, look at that. And that looks like maybe um, a lab, probably a lab, Labrador Retriever. Those are beautiful too. Sporting dogs usually have keen sense of smell and sight. Different breeds of sporting dogs range in size from small spaniels to large setters, pointers, and retrievers. Spaniels are intelligent, small to medium-sized dogs that make excellent pets. They have long noses, and like scent hounds, they have big floppy ear flaps. Spaniels locate and retrieve, and they are also used to flush birds from their hiding places in tall grass. Different kinds of spaniels do different things. When they spot game, pointers and setters direct their muzzles towards the hunted animals. That means their noses. They are trained to sit or stand still for as long as an hour. Retrievers are strong dogs that locate and bring back the game. They are usually good swimmers. Most retrievers, such as the Golden and Labrador, make very fine pets because they can train easily. <laughs> Look at those guys. Terriers are small, lively dogs that were first bred in the British Isles. They were used to hunt burrowing animals such as rabbits, foxes, and rats. Terriers were so popular that many European artists painted them. They were also mascots in British military units. Some terriers even won medals for their service in the British Army. Terriers are bouncy, friendly dogs that bark a lot. Because they always seem to be ready to play, these short-legged, stocky dogs make good pets. They like to jump a lot. Here's another one. Oh, look at that. Specialty trained breeds of working and herding dogs help people all over the world. German shepherds and sheepdogs herd sheep and cattle. Malamutes and huskies pull sleds across the snow in Alaska. Doberman pinchers and rottweilers act as watchdogs. St. Bernards can locate people lost in the snow. Guide dogs help visually impaired people find their way. Bloodhounds assist the police by sniffing for drugs or bombs in cars or at airports. For centuries, farmers and herdsmen have used dogs to help guard and move their flocks. Many countries have their own breed of herding dog. In the United States, the Border Collie is a common herded, herding dog. And if you had Mrs. Morrison in kindergarten, this is the type of dog she has. That's the kind that Jingles is. So you might have seen pictures of that before. But here are some Huskies and Malamutes. Now, let's talk about what Seymour Sim Simon means when he tells you about different dog breeds. What were some of the different breeds and different things that dogs can do? What do you remember Seymour Simon telling you? Huh. Non-sporting dogs are different from another, as you can imagine. They range from the friendly Dalmatian with its white coat and black spots to the deeply wrinkled Sharpe or Chinese fighting dog. The Chow Chow has a blue-black mouth and tongue. The Bichon Frise is a fluffy white dog. The Bulldog looks tough but has a gentle manner. Still another is the La, La, uh, La Siopso, a watchdog and a symbol of good fortune in Tibetan temples. Poodles are one of the most popular non-sporting dogs. 
They are intelligent, good-natured, friendly, and very loyal. Just what people look for in a pet. Because their curly hair doesn't shed, but keeps growing, poodles have to be clipped regularly. Poodles vary in size. Standard poodles weigh as much as 70 pounds. Miniature and toy poodles can weigh less than 10 pounds. Oh, that little fur guy. <laughs> when I was a kid, we called these the Ewoks because they look kind of like the Ewoks from Star Wars. That's not their real name, though. Toy dogs are kept mostly as lap dogs and pets. The English Toy Spaniel is a mini version of a full-size dog. Other toy dogs, such as the Chihuahua and the Snub-Nosed Pug, don't resemble any large dogs. 4,000 years ago, the Chinese kept lion dogs that looked like the Pekingese dogs we have today. Maltese dogs have been found in Egyptian tombs and have been depicted in early Roman paintings. The royal families of England, France, and Russia often included their pet toy dogs in paintings. Some toy dogs were bred to perform specific jobs. During the Middle Ages, nobles who lived in cold castles and stone buildings sometimes used their to toy dogs to warm their feet. The Tibetan Spaniel could turn prayer wheels. The tiny turnspit was trained to run on a wheel attached to a spit. As the spit turned, the game on the spit was rotated over the fire. So it's a part of a thing that goes around and cooks um, meat. That's what a spit is. It's kind of, it's a little hard to explain, but it's something that they used to do um, back a long time ago. And it was kind of like a stick that they would put the meat on and then it would rotate over the flame to cook. You may have seen it in movies or in books. Oh, mixed breed meat. La, la, la. Let me try that again. Mixed breed dogs or mutts are all kinds of shapes, colors, and sizes. Sometimes mutts are even friendlier and better tempered than purebreds. They may also adapt more easily to different surroundings. A mutt is a very special dog. No other dog is exactly like it. When you adopt a mutt as a puppy, you usually don't know who its parents or grandparents are. Sometimes you can tell how big a mutt will become by the size of its paws or feet. Dogs have different personalities and behaviors. The way a dog is raised and trained also affects its personality and behavior. A dog doesn't have to be a purebred to make a wonderful pet. Now look at this one. This one's super cute too. Aww. Now, I'd like you to talk to someone about different, about some of the ways that different breeds of dogs looked and act differently. And maybe share with them what a mutt is. Chewing on something. There are many different ways you can get a pet dog. A dog owner you know may offer you a puppy from a new litter. If you adopt a dog from a local animal shelter, make sure the animals there look healthy and well cared for. And ask about the dog you wish to adopt. The dogs are usually given away for free or for a small donation to the sh shelter. If you want to buy a purebred dog, ask a pet owner or someone at the local kennel club to recommend a good breeder. Breed rescue clubs sometimes provide foster homes to purebreds that have been abandoned or given away. Look at those dogs playing around. A puppy needs someone to care for it, to feed it, train it, walk it, and pet it. A person needs to spend a lot of time building a good relationship with a puppy. You should get a puppy only if you or someone in your family can do all of those things. Dogs need a good deal of attention and care too. 
They have to be fed, groomed, walked, and trained. Some dogs need lots of room. Some dogs can live in small apartments. It's up to you and your parents to decide whether you have the time to care for a dog and whether you have the room for it. If you decide to adopt a dog, you will have more than a pet. You will have a lifelong loyal friend and companion. What is a companion? Yeah, it's someone that you spend time with. It's kind of like a best friend, right? And then why do you think Seymour Simon ends this book with information about becoming a pet owner? Yeah? Oh, look at this puppy. Hold on. Look at this little puppy. <laughs> that bull is almost as big as its head, right? And then look at this cute dog. <laughs> oh, I know this was read in a little different way than normal, um, but I wanted you to see the amazing photographs and pictures in this book. So um, I hope that you enjoyed learning more about dogs and that you actually learned something new. There is a writing about reading to do on Seesaw for this book, and I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.